This is Tamara at MowgliBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Italian Elegance Cowl, which is a free pattern you'll find on MowgliBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description where you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, a link out to the written pattern, and links to all the supplies you need, including the yarn and the crochet hook. This pattern calls for one ball of Red Heart and Italian Story Luce and a USK 6.5 millimeter hook. This one is by Furls. Now let's take a look at the finished cowl. All right, and here we have the Italian Elegance Cowl. It's a very simple pattern, crocheted in the round. We start at the bottom with a solid round of double crochets, and then we make some special cluster stitches on up till we have the height we want, and then finish with another round of double crochet. You can see the beautiful Italian Story Luce has these gorgeous sequins in it. If you're unable to find this yarn, Red Heart Huga Charm would be a great substitute as it has a sparkle. It's not a sequin sparkle, it's a sparkly thread, but it has the sparkle and it's the same weight. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the stitches that make up the cowl. Now the Italian Elegance Cowl can be made with any multiple of two stitches. However, I recommend starting it with a chain of 86. This will give us a finished cowl if you meet meet the gauge listed in the pattern of around 30 inches around or 15 inches laid flat like we just saw. It's also about 10 inches tall or wide depending on how you look at it. Now since I, as I said it's any multiple of two I'm just going to make a tiny little cowl here to demonstrate today. So if you're making it full size you can chain to your desired length or until you have 86 chains. All right after you've made your 86 chains you're going to skip the two chains closest to the hook and double crochet in each remaining chain across. When I crochet into my chains, I like to work into the back hump rather than under the top two loops. I find that this gives a really nice finished edge, which you can see right here on our cowl, so that that bottom edge looks the same as our top edge. So to do that, I'll go ahead and yarn over, skip those two chains closest to the hook here, one and two, and then in the chain after that, I will go ahead and get under that loop here. There we go. And make my first double crochet. Those two chains that we skipped are not going to count as a stitch. So if you chained 86 and skip those first two chains, then by the time you finish double crocheting in each remaining chain, you should have 84 stitches at the end of round one. Now, Obviously, we're just kind of working in a row. We're working back into the chain, but just double crochet across and I'll show you here in just a minute how we turn this row into a round. All right, so when you've gotten to the end of row one and you've crocheted in each one of those remaining chains, then it's time to slip stitch to the first double crochet you made. You don't want to slip stitch into either of those two chains that we skipped. So go ahead and just stick your hook under the top two loops of that stitch, just as you normally would. And then we can make our slip stitch and we're working in the round. So even though we worked it as a row, we're gonna call it round one. When we're all done with our pattern, I will show you how to take care of this end here and cinch this up using a yarn needle. In the meantime though, you can go ahead and keep crocheting beginning with round two. Now, round two begins again with a chain two, one, two, that does not count as a stitch. Then we're going to double crochet in the exact same stitch like so. Then we chain one, skip the next stitch, and cluster in the stitch after this. Now cluster is a term in crochet that can mean many different things. It's just sort of a generic term, so anytime you see cluster in a pattern it's important to go look at the notes or special stitches section to see exactly what the designer means. For this pattern, a cluster is a double crochet two together, but all worked into one stitch so that it's not a decrease. So let's go ahead and make that together. I'll yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up my loop, yarn over and pull through two, stop with two loops left on the hook, yarn over again, go back into the same stitch, pull up another loop, yarn over and pull through two, and then with three loops left on the hook, we yarn over and pull through all three loops. There we go. This yarn does have quite a bit of texture to it between the sequins and just the general fuzziness and the animal hair, so you do need to take your time with this yarn a little bit. So after I make that cluster, I am ready to continue with our repeat, which is just chain one, 
skip the next stitch, cluster in the next stitch. And that's what we're going to do all the way around. Make one a little quickly here for you, and then I will make the next one slowly once more. So there was a cluster, then we chain one, skip the next stitch, and then cluster in the next. So, oops, I said we'd do that slowly. Let me pull that back out so we can do it together. We yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then rather than finishing our double crochet, we yarn over again, go back into the same stitch, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two, then yarn over and pull through all three, like so. Then we chain one and skip the next one. So that's our basic repeat. It's the cluster in the next stitch, chain one, skip one. So when we get all the way around our 84 stitches or however many, if you made more or less, you'll end up skipping that last stitch with your chain one there, skip the last stitch and join to the first cluster made. Again, not the chain two. I'm going to continue making my chain one, skip one, and then followed by a cluster on around my row two here, and I will see you when we're ready to finish up row two and begin row three. All right, here we are at the end of round two. I've got one more stitch in the previous row. I've made my chain one, so I'll skip that one and join with a slip stitch to the top of the very first double crochet. Now, remember we chained two. We wanna to join to the top of that double crochet. So the chain two and double crochet two together sort of work like a little cluster here. In the finished item, you really can't tell where the first cluster is. You can see it blends in really well. So after that, we're ready for round three. Rounds three through 14 of this pattern are all identical. And in fact, this is the little bit of yarn I had left over from my ball of yarn after making the first cowl. So you could add a couple more rows. Well, maybe one, maybe two if you wanted to, but I always like to stop a little early just to make sure everybody has enough yarn. So let's go ahead and work round three, which like I say, is exactly the same as rounds four through 14. We are going to slip stitch into the chain one space like so, and then chain two, double crochet right in that same chain space. There we are, and then we chain one, skip the next cluster, and cluster in the next chain space. That's it. We're just going to continue just like our previous row, only instead of skipping stitches, and crocheting into stitch stitches, we're skipping stitches and crocheting into the chain spaces. So the key to make rounds three through 14 work really is just to slip stitch on into that first chain space, and then you can continue to work your way around in pattern. So like I say, we're gonna continue doing this for the next several rounds through at least 14 or more if you want them, or less if you wanted fewer, if you like a narrower cowl, more like a sort of like an oversized necklace type look then you can absolutely do that too. And like I say, with a multiple of two, you could go quite long with this if you wanted to. You could make it as big or as short as you want. Of course, if you do change the size, you will use a different amount of yarn. So that is something to keep in mind as well. So I'm almost all the way around my round three. Here's my last chain one space. So I'll go ahead and put my last cluster here. Then I chain one, and if I skip that last one there, remember that's the one we finished up on last time, then we're ready to go ahead and join to the top of that double crochet, and that's it. To can keep going then, like I say, rounds through four through 14, we just slip stitch into that one and work just the way we just worked that previous round. After you've gotten the height you want or you've worked through round 14, then it's time for round 15, which is the final round of our pattern. All right, so round 15 is gonna be pretty darn simple. We're just going to start with a chain two which we will not count as a stitch, not even as part of a cluster for this one. We're gonna yarn over and go ahead and double crochet right in that first stitch there, and then double crochet in the chain space. There we are, and then double crochet in the stitch, and double crochet in this chain space, and just continue that all the way around. So if you started with, it would have been a total of 84 stitches in round one, after you've skipped those first two chains, then you should have 84 stitches here in round 15. So however many stitches you made in round one, you want to make sure you have the same number of stitches here. That way you haven't increased or decreased and you will have a beautiful finished cowl. And of course, when you get to the end of this round, all you have to do is join to the first stitch and break your yarn. And of course, then weave in your ends. 
but that will be when you will also need to address the end here after that we made on row one. So let me go ahead and put my hook down. It's kind of addictive, isn't it? Just making double crochet sometimes, you just don't wanna stop. But I think you've got the idea. So that is our last round, just a round of double crochets. I get to the end, join, break the yarn, all done. But we still need to come back and take care of this end here. Now, of course, anytime you weave in your ends, I highly recommend using a yarn needle. I'm a big fan of weaving in at least six inches or 15 centimeters on your ends just to make sure your ends are secure because there's nothing worse than making a project than having it come apart on you. So to finish up this round one, where we didn't have it closed here at the bottom, all I'm going to do is put that beginning end on my yarn needle, and then I am going to go right under those loops at the base of my first stitch. Now remember I said I like to work into that back hump, so it gives me this really nice two loop bottom on my project. So I can just stick my needle right under those two loops, cinch it up, kind of come back over to that one there, send it down in there, and then when I weave in that end, it's invisible and we'll have a great finished edge to our project. So let's take one more look at the finished Italian elegance cowl. All right, here we have the finished cowl again. You can see we have our first row of double crochet, then our rows of clusters on up, followed by a final round of double crochet. But I just wanted to go ahead and point out right around here, I believe it's right about there, is where I had cinched together those two stitches. Because if we look here, I had it a minute ago. Okay, there it is. It's genuinely difficult to find the seam in this pattern. Doing the chain two and then double crochet really does visually sort of make it look like the rest of the clusters. But officially, our seam is right about there, so that's about where we finished off. But you can absolutely get a great finished look with this cowl, even though it's very simple. It's also very elegant. I think sometimes the simplest designs have the best look. And all it takes is one ball of Red Heart and Italian Story Luce. Like I said, if you do want to substitute, Red Heart Huga Charm would be a great one to use. You'll need about 200 yards, so still just about one ball of most yarns. Like I say, there was a little bit extra left at the end of this one. It calls for, it is a 218 yard ball, so it probably takes a little bit less than 200, but that gives you a little extra room to wiggle too, since everybody's gauge is just that little bit different. I hope you'll give this pattern a try. Once again, go to the link in the description. There you'll find the right and left-handed videos, as well as links to the yarn and the hook and everything else you've seen here today. If you like this video, please do give it a like, leave us a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.